two times, but well, on third time <laughs> I'm here. And actually five minutes is almost nothing because RC Slog is a very deep thing, uh, but I will just show you a few things about how it works and what you can do with it. So, actually, RC Slog, you, you, I think most of you just know it's some diamond which sits on your Linux box and just taking logs from one place and sorting, maybe doing things and processing that and placing in different other things, uh, other place, I mean. So, yeah, it's just easy when you doing about it in that way, but it's actually a bit more complex. So here is picture of versus log data, data flow. It can do much more for you because it's, well, actually we are using it in Lazada, but well, I can tell it's not about our companies. We can talk about that a, a bit later. So, few inputs of versus log. So, place from where you can get messages into into that engine. Uh, actually, it's easiest is IM file, which does just read in file, and then you can process messages from that file. IM journal reading from journal D, so you can make it consistent with your journal D. Easy and actually much more. I just don't like to to explain every of them because you can guess just by name what that modules can do. Then when you get some messages on input you can connect it to some rule set which can do some processing like checking some conditions, setting some variables and as well you can do message modification you can't do it right inside of a rule set because language is limited, but you can do it via some external modules, like a module for anonymizing IP address when, you, you, when you'd like to hide actual IP address, you can do things like that. Like uh, MMDB lookup, which doing uh, GeoIP, GeoIP uh, uh, extraction, and most interesting here is actually MM normalize and MM JSON parse, which can parse any structure for you into JSON and from JSON. Uh, we're using it heavily because we have structured uh, format for our logs, and MM normalize help us uh, much. One. A really good thing about RSS log here is uh, that MM normalize is actually using uh, abstract syntax tree, so it doesn't use some grok or gexp, which actually CPU intensive. Uh, AST help to process logs much much faster and with much lower CPU load. And as well, we have few actions. Uh, that actually plays when you can output processed messages like file, another machine, uh, Elasticsearch, Kafka, just different program or things like that. But yeah, actually we are not talking about versus log, we are on hack and tells. So I will show you a few th interesting things about that. Uh, one thing is uh, RSS log support dynamic counters. So you actually can count things which flowing through your RSS log. So, for example, when your API, multiple API logging into RSS log, you can count inside and have that statistics on output. So it has special uh, output model which can output that uh, counters. So here just small sample, I think it's self-describing, so you can describe uh, counter and then you can increase it uh, by by some variable that host name is not actual value because it's always increased by one it's a uh, bucket so your counter for that host name will be increased on one by one well yeah I told already that five minutes is actually nothing about it. 
enough. Okay, questions. Okay. So let me just finally show that lookup tables, which you can reload by some message, so it's possible. And example like you can control things, you can fire a program by sending message to RCSlog socket. So there is actually much more than just login processing. Question. Yeah. What is this language here that you? It's Rainer script. <laughs> Rainer is actually first name of a uh, guy who active, to, who invented it and actively maintained it, Rainer Gerhards, and he just named that script Rainer script. It's very like a uh, small subset of any C-like language like PHP or JavaScript or C, so you can see that it's actually really like that. Okay. So, are you saying that it's possible to maybe serve an API using RSS logs? So you get a data in. And That's a question I'd like really to show you, but it's for now it's impossible because you can't pass uh, packets back. So there is no way to process message and put it back to the same stream. So you oh. you should put it on some other thing. But if you are using UDP, for example, nothing prevent you to. Okay. To do that. No, but I mean, what if you had like a program, like some 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 shell script or whatever that was like receiving some data? Actually, yeah, you can connect that uh, output of uh, message processing module to something, which so you can make some kind of processing pipeline. But yeah, it's uh, it's not intended to use like that way. But you can do some hacks <laughs> around that. Well. Actually, uh, there is place for more ideas and now <laughs> for questions. Uh, I I doubt about what uh, to show else, and actually there is a lot of different things because I'm working for maybe half of year with sources log heavily, and it's very interesting thing. But it's very uh, unstable. It's like every time you when you're trying to do th something, it's like minefield because you never know if how safe is it. So it's always about testing, about checking things, and there are a lot of space to make some hacks around. So next time when you need some way to control program or to start something by receiving a few packets on UDP, for example, like port knocking, you can do it with RCS logs. Does yeah. RSSLog support other kind of languages to control it besides the Rainer script? Uh, well, if you remember that all good times when RSSLog was, any actually syslog uh, was only about some star and file name, mm -hmm. so it still supports that language, but it's uh, almost not used now. So it still have compatibility with previous generation of its own language. But if you mean some other language, uh, there is no way to use it inside of rule sets, but you can exec something oh, okay. yeah, by using that uh, message modification model. In that case, you can pass messages to it and receive it back, modificated messages back from that model. Or with OMProg, OM it, it can receive message only one way, so just for processing. Actually, I made... Uh, there's a slow exporter for Prometheus, which is uh, using exactly that OM prog, and it's just Python script, which processing messages and exposing some metrics to Prometheus. Any other questions? Well, I don't know what to show <laughs> else <laughs> right now. So. Yeah, it actually times out, so yeah. I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>